Zynga is free to play. You also glean some revenue from advertising. But one of the things that's really getting a lot of buzz this morning is the fact that on the earnings call you talked about the possibility of subscription services. Walk us through that potential revenue stream and how it factors into your outlook for the rest of the year. Yeah, as you look at the gaming category overall, there's a lot of innovation happening right now, whether it's you know the coming of 5G, streaming technologies, but there's also a lot of innovation happening with, uh, with business models right now. Uh, you've seen some big announcements from Apple and from Google talking about subscription-based services. And so you're starting to see a lot of conversation and experimentation around can we move from premium games and free-to-play games to adding a new type of business model, which is subscription-based. And so we've started to look at some options there inside of our portfolio of products to see if it's possible to create a valuable um, relationship with players that's based on subscription. So I think as you look at the gaming business overall over the next several years, subscriptions will start to become more and more prominent. But I still think the majority of, of the industry will be driven by premium and, and freemium business models. Interesting. Now, I know you're partnering with Snap on its gaming platform, but when a company like Apple does come out and say they're going to launch a streaming service, uh, a, video stre a video gaming service, uh, similar news from Google and the like, are you talking to those companies too? Oh, absolutely. We're, we're platform agnostic. You know, we, we make and publish games, uh, and we want to go where the audience is. So we're, we're very good partners with Apple, with Google. Uh, we've published on Facebook and most recently announced our, our relationship with Snap. So where there's an audience that wants to be entertained by Farmville or Words with Friends or Empires and Puzzles, uh, you know, we'll get the games in shape and be ready for them. Frank, have you figured out how to engage with subscription services that somebody else owns, like an Apple Arcade, for example, without breaking your game distribution mechanics? Because for so long, companies like Zynga have ridden off of hit games to distribute other games you've got in the pipeline. Um, yeah, I imagine that's harder under a subscription model. I think the, uh, the production model economics related to how developers fit into subscriptions is something that all of the big publishers are going to have to face. And I think it's going to be one of the challenges for how many subscription services get off the ground successfully, uh, which ones are popular. There's going to be a lot of title exclusivity that comes into play here about which subscription service has which title. You won't see kind of a ubiquitous offering of all games on one service because of the platform dynamics and the desire for a lot of developers and publishers to have their own subscriptions. So I think it's going to be a very fragmented environment in the near term. Maybe over the long term it starts to settle in, but there's a lot of really interesting technologies that are coming together right now that, you know, between streaming and cross-platform play combined with subscription, that I think is going to lead to a lot of new offerings that players are going to really like. But there's still a lot to figure out about how publishers and subscription owners really interact and have relationships. Yeah, and Zynga's roots actually lie with Facebook. A lot of the early success can be attributed to, to, the, to that platform. I realize that the company has really shifted gears. You've said recently that, you know, the turnaround is in full effect, essentially. The distribution strategy has changed. But when you do look at a company like Facebook, all of the changes it's made to its platform, now the focus, increased focus on messaging, how do you think that's impacting the app economy, and has it had any impact on Zynga? Well, look, I think Facebook is a platform for us to publish games. We were a very early developer of games for their messenger service. Uh, we like the fact that uh, Snap is also entering that uh, category. We believe that, you know, chat clients in the West can be a very popular game platform for players. But overall, if you look at Zynga today, we're 95% on mobile. Our largest partners are actually Apple and Google. And we launch fully native, free-to-play services that appeal to mobile gamers all over the world. Uh, mobile is the largest, fastest growing category of games. There's uh, over 2.5 billion mobile gamers worldwide, and it's growing every day. Mobile is now the largest gaming platform in the world, accounting for over 50% of all gaming. It's bigger than PC and console combined. So we like where our company is positioned right now. We're starting the year with tremendous momentum. We've got games coming out on Apple, on Google, on Facebook, on Snap. Uh, we feel very good about the momentum that we have in the company and the prospects for the industry overall going forward. Yeah, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, you got some uh, headline and franchises there. Yeah, and Star Wars in the works. Frank Gabo, thanks for joining us today on the heels of Zynga's earnings. Stock's up 5.5%.